yeah yeah and um yeah okay how can start now yeah right. good luck thanks let me just grab the right window uh, <clears throat> all right uh can you guys all see that that look good uh yeah okay so um i got a lot of slides i'm gonna go quick through this um so my project here was on trying to make a smart home more intelligent with large language models. Um, this is for my bachelor's uh, in data science. Um, so the agenda here is as follows. I'm not going to hit every one of them. Um, all these formats are probably going to be the same. So let's just get into it. The problem that I've identified, I think, with smart home devices as kind of an enthusiast is the intention of them is to make your life easier. So think smart light switches, smart light bulbs, um, appliances that are also smart, all of these things that uh, we have as Internet of Things devices that are getting pretty popular. Um, the promise of these is to make your life easier. Just as an example, I use them for when I wake up in the morning to have the coffee ready for me when um, once I get out of bed. Uh, turn on and off lights when I come home in the evening, if it's dark out. Ever left your house and thought, did I turn off the stove? This is kind of what these devices are intending to, to uh, help with, is to help you manage your home while you're away and make things easier for your day-to-day -day life. The reality of it is a little bit different right now. Um, while, while it's promised to make your life easier, well, what I've found is that you're inundated with a new app for every kind of device, and they're often very clunky. So you may need to configure them with something like Google Home or Alexa or HomeKit, but these things may not be the most intuitive way to do it, especially with things like uh, changing from, uh, or I guess using voice commands uh, more often. So when you walk into a room, your first instinct, if it's dark, is to flip the light switch on, right? Um, not to yell out, you know, turn on, I'm not going to say the names, uh, but <laughs> turn on the lights, right? Um, and not all of these things integrate together. There are still things that aren't supported by HomeKit or Google Home or whatever. So some other projects have come around like Home Assistant, Hubitat, et cetera, that's intended to integrate these all together and give you centralized management. So those can fill the gap, but they aren't really a total solution. So. I guess in summary, I would say our current smart home industry has introduced complexities um, that can involve managing multiple apps um, and may complicate the user interface or even our experience just interacting with devices in our homes um, that we normally would be intuitively acting with, interacting with. So uh, smart bulbs in lieu of smart switches, for example, can result in like a confusing use of a light switch. Um, if you've ever encountered a scenario where you you're not somebody told you please don't touch the light switch you'll break you know alexa capability or whatever you have to yell out turn on and off the lights right so are these actually making life easier i would argue maybe not maybe it's making them worse but this is kind of what i identified as the problem and something i wanted to solve so my motivation here was as these things increase in our home and we continue to see a trend in adoption, um, we need to figure out a way to make this more intuitive and actually go back and solve the problem of make my life easier, right? So some things have been introduced to kind of bridge that gap, like routines or automation capability within some of these ecosystems like Google Home. Uh, I'm just going to say Google Home because I tend to ha or I have one. Um, but sometimes these routines are too simple and don't allow enough logic to um, to work really as well as you would want them to, or they can be uh, overly complicated and, and require a high amount of time investment into these. Um, so whether we like it or not, smart devices are here to stay and we're just going to continue seeing this prevalence of them. So what I thought is large language models may offer a potential that can um, reduce or diminish this burden that we might have of having to continuously configure and manage all of these devices and apps in different places. Um, so uh, I use Home Assistant pretty regularly. It actually took me quite a while um, 
to adopt smart devices. But once I did, I was kind of all in. Um, so uh, I use this as kind of the place to manage all of my central devices. Um, and it creates a good environment for doing so and consolidating all devices in one place um, and creates them as like entities. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few slides. But as natural language code, pro code natural language processing based code generation, as that has progressed and become better over time, um, this can enable us or has enabled us to generate a base of code, sometimes that works just out of the box or enough that we can make some small edits in it to make it more functional uh, or to make it actually work. So reliability is still a challenge or continues to be a challenge, but it is getting better. And so um, existing research into this area plus others with leveraging LLMs uh, in analyzing logs for pattern recognition um, gives us a kind of more proactive way to approach this um, by identifying you know, errors or inefficiencies. So thinking along those lines, maybe we can use this or, or reinterpret this as not necessarily an error or an efficiency, but an opportunity for improvement and find some of these patterns. So I've listed a few things that are I think directly related to this. Uh, there's definitely more in the in the paper, but these are the ones that I pulled out that I thought were the most helpful or directly related. So for the last 10 years, we've had um, work has been done, I would say, on analyzing logs with machine learning and trying to identify those patterns and identify inefficiencies. Um, and then as ChatGPT rolled out, we saw sort of a resurgence in um, uh, an interest in machine learning with natural language processing. Uh, we This is colloquially is called the uh, AI summer, um, and these kind of happen uh, over time um, with summers and winters of interest and then lack of interest. Um, and so fairly recently, uh, there has been more advancement and more uh, work on automated code generation. Um, specifically using natural language processing for that. So things like generating C-sharp code um, uh, or specifically generating YAML temp templates for automated infrastructure stand-up with things like Ansible and Terraform. Um, so there are, uh, things are moving in this direction to uh, continue to improve this. So kind of mashing all of those things together, um, I think that we can, I think there, I thought there was an opportunity here for uh, use simple log analysis um, with machine learning to find a pattern or, you know, when you're using devices, um, recognize that pattern and kind of transform that um, in a way that is usable uh, or repurpose some of this research and kind of apply it in, in a different way. Um, so the approach here, um, I guess it takes a fairly novel approach. It's a little bit distinct from some of this prior research that has come out as we're trying to put it all together and but use it for maybe a little bit different of a purpose. Uh, I wanted to try to redefine how we interact with objects in our home. And um, there's definitely a gap here that I feel like uh, exists. Um, so I wanted to also try to shift away from purely relying on voice commands. Um, that seems like it's been the focus over the last few years. So I wanted to try to repurpose natural language processing for uh, code generation related to automated uh, templates for, or I guess, automation templates uh, that were Home Assistant compliant or you know whatever your management uh, thing is of choice. Um, and then I wanted to also kind of discover it. So kind of repurposing that log analysis. So in designing this, everything's consolidated into a single controller. So that would be Home Assistant, which provides standardized log output in like a JSON format, which gives us some easy filtering of this data of this data and an easy way to, to label it. Um, and then there needed to be some modularity for swapping out LLMs to use. So just as an example, this is what it kind of looks like in this not so great mock-up, but um, everything kind of feeds in together on, on my local network or on like a VLAN. And then all of that is managed in Home Assistant. And then we have some of this capability offloaded into uh, a laptop uh, running an Elastic. 
So again, the source being JSON data or JSON files uh, and logs from Home Assistant. Um, uh, I have a few dozen entity or a few dozen devices in my house, which equates to over a thousand over a thousand entities. So there's quite a lot of data coming in. Um, so I needed to consolidate that into uh, something else. So that's where we used Elastic, or I guess an Elk stack in this case, to feed in all that data, which allows us to filter through it. Um, and this can be streaming in, or you can just kind of upload it as you as you want. So here's just an like an output of this is what it looks like in in Elastic um, uh, for all of the properties related to a specific entity or a specific event. So there's a lot of stuff to filter through in here, um, but this makes it a lot easier to filter out. Here's the relevant data that we need and what we want to feed into like an LLM. So in part of the, as part of this data collection, um, Home Assistant generally runs on a Raspberry Pi. It's designed for low-powered hardware, which comes with constraints. So limited compute power, limited storage, um, which limits how much data it logs or saves in its database, which is just running SQLite. Um, and, but it does give us some time-based sorting, and it does, uh, like, nearly every event is going to be triggered or logged in there. So that can lead to too much data sometimes. Um, every second uh, is a new event, whether anything happens or not. So there's quite a lot to filter through. So my solution here obviously being Elastic. So offload a lot of that into Elastic um, to create a more powerful uh, or, or give it the resources it needs to be able to run efficiently and let us fil filter out all this data. And that comes with some kind of an analysis engine as well. So looking at it in Elastic, Here's just a trend of over a day, how much activity was there? So what entities um, triggered, what states were they in? And we can kind of see throughout the day that it goes up or down depending on the usage. So um, this can cor correlate or correspond, I guess, to what time of day it is. Are you asleep? Are you awake? Are you making lunch? You know, um, your daily kind of routine. So to actually analyze this data, um, what I decided to do was use a pre-written prompt. Now, the prompt itself um, can be changed. I wanted to do this for simplicity of uh, and standardization across these LLMs was find a pattern in this data and output or create a YAML automation template um, for Home Assistant. Now, Home Assistant, you can create automations with, um, but they're all standardized in YAML if you want to write it uh, kind of from the ground up. So. Um, this also removed the need to interact with it as an individual, um, or that's being kind of the goal is I don't want to have to tell a chat bot every time I want it to make an automation. I want this to be done automatically. So uh, as part of this, I do need to review it manually. Um, obviously, uh, we need to see if it actually works and understand what didn't work if it doesn't. So loading this into Home Assistant, we have kind of two criteria. One, did it actually work? So that gives us a binary pass fail. Is this code compliant or not? Um, if it doesn't, then it fails automatically. Um, but once it's loaded in, how useful is it? So this is a little bit subjective, um, not, not quite ordinal, I would say. Um, but uh, as a user of this, I feel like I'm fairly qualified to determine how well this works and also how convenient it was when it actually triggered. So uh, we also have event tracing in Home Assistant that allows us to determine what, when an automation triggered, at what time, um, and then any conditions that uh, made it fail or whether it executed successfully. So this is just an example of this executed successfully and there were no issues, um, or I guess the automation executed successfully. How well the automation worked is, again, the subjective part, but this at least shows us, yes, it worked. So the findings and kind of takeaways from this were commercial LLMs work pretty well. Uh, ChatGPT works fairly well, um, mostly on simpler automations. Things that are more complicated tend not to work as well um, or may require some human inter intervention. So if it failed, that, that triggered a, let's take a look at this and see why it failed. Um, this is actually an example of one that did work right out of the box. And this just says, turn on the basement stair lights if motion is detected. So I have a motion detector up, and then I have a smart light switch. So when you walk 
down those stairs, it detects motion, and it turns on. And that was based on log data of every time I went down those stairs, I would turn on the light switch, and when I left, I would turn it off, or I'd turn it off after so many minutes. So this worked out pretty well um, and uh, required, this is the idea here is I didn't have to think about this. It just created it uh, based on the log data, based on that pattern of me constantly doing it. So now when I walk down the stairs, this flips on automatically and I don't have to uh, even touch the light switch anymore. It's like, I didn't really think that I would need this, but it kind of figured it out for me to make things easier. Um, some interaction was involved. This is my little coffee bot. So I have coffee around 1.30, 2 p.m. every day. Um, so based on that continual pattern, um, it created an automation that turned on the coffee machine every day Now at that time. Um, what this required me to do was add a little script to it that um, you see in the middle, we see this service script.coffeebot confirmation, Carlo, and uh, one for my wife as well. Uh, I don't want the coffee bot or I don't want the coffee machine turning on every day if I'm not home. So I added in a confirmation that said, you know, sends to your phone and says, uh, hit yes or no. And based on your answer, it will turn on or off. So some things that are a little more complicated required some inter intervention, but overall still gave me something that was fairly usable. Um, and then I'm almost finished here and I'm getting towards the end of time. Um, when it came to open source pre-trained LLMs, I used a lot of these from Hugging Face. Didn't work very well. Most of the output was unusable. Um, the only thing that really did give me something that worked fairly well or that could have worked fairly well was using a model that was already trained on, uh, on YAML automation or creating YAML templates for Ansible um, deployments. So uh, I think I think there is some promise here for fine tuning um, if you train it uh, on a, or if you use existing templates and train it or try to fine tune one that already exists. So that's kind of where I would conclude here is uh, there is some promise in removing the burden of managing a lot of smart devices in this way. Um, if we can have it recognize uh, patterns in how we interact with our homes um, and have it automate things without us thinking about what could we automate it already kind of figures out that for you based on um, your pattern of how you how you interact with your home. Uh, there's definitely simple automation that's possible without needing to intervene with it, um, but I think this helps to bridge the gap between smart devices and smart homes. So do you have smart devices or do you have a smart home, so to speak, that works together um, with all of those devices rather than individual things kind of working on their own? Um, so. For the future, I think the uh, what I would pursue here is trying to fine tune some non-commercial LLMs to reduce that resource constraint and size and make things more specific, uh, which may get around the privacy issues of using commercial LLMs like ChatGPT um, and try to use that to improve model efficiency. So get it to run on lower powered hardware is I think where I would pursue that um, in conjunction with a non-commercial uh, LLM or something that's a little bit more small uh, that uses less resources. All right, that's it. Thanks for listening. Um, any questions? Thank Carol. Uh, anyone have any questions to him? Uh, hi, Carlo. Um, yeah, thank you for the presentation. Um, so how do you measure the performance? Uh, so the performance of the model is measured based on, well, I guess, do you mean hardware performance or do you mean like how well it actually created a uh, automation? Um, yes, um, automation. Let's say yeah. automation. How do you? How do you measure the performance? You mentioned that you want to fine tune and improve the performance, right? So yeah, that's where I would put it in the future. Yeah. So what my point is, there should be some base point, baseline for the performance if you want to improve it. So I was wondering um, if there's any, um, if what, wondering your thoughts on what kind of perform, how you are going to measure the performance. Yeah, I think um, what you're hitting at is another piece that I 
I think is difficult to determine is where where's the baseline for what works and what doesn't. I think starting with simple automations like um, uh, with you know two versus you know how many devices you want to go up from there, how complicated it is. It's a little bit difficult, I think, to um, to establish a baseline with so many different uh, solutions, I think, that you can get for smart devices. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to think. That's a good question. Maybe the maybe where we would start with evaluating performance is what the rate of success is for a given environment based on um, how many successful automation templates or successful automations you can get um, based on like a sample size. So um, if I am, if I have, let's say, well, we'll just use my environment. Um, if I can get a certain percentage of usable automations, um, that would give me maybe a measure of performance of this model performs uh, with some kind of accuracy um, versus uh, not having any that work at all does that does that make sense yep thank you thank you. i just wanted to hear your thoughts yeah thank you yeah anyone have no, any more question yeah i have a question yep uh, okay i wish to know is it possible is there like a defined perimeter within which you can operate or like can you be let me say 10 miles away from your house and open your devices, or do you have to be inside the house to do that? Um, you actually don't need to be inside your house. So some other automations that I have kind of come up with that I wasn't able to get to reproduce is um, based on, so I have I have an automation in my house. I have like six robot vacuums that I have bought over time, um, and they each do their own room. And they only vacuum when I leave a GPS fence or a or a geo fence around my house. So you can still get things to work when you're gone. So if you're on vacation for a few days uh, and you want or you're away from the home for a few days uh, and you want the lights to turn on and off um, at a certain time, um, you may not necessarily need to be home, but your um, uh, your automations or things will continue to to work. Um, and also based on your proximity to your home, you know, are you commuting back home? Uh, is the direction of your phone, for example, um, moving closer to your home? Uh, that can that kind of data can be used to inform uh, you may be commuting home or you may um, be on your way home. So start up some uh, some automations or automate something like turn on lights or uh, or things like that. Does that does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Carlo. And now let's turn to Richard Angel. Great. Thanks, everyone. Okay.